Right, you guys, today we're taking a look at how to solve a printer not found error on your system. Now, this is running Windows 11, but this will work for any version of Windows. I've got an Epson EcoTank here, as you can see, ET3850, but you could probably use this for a lot of Epson printers. So I'm going to head over to the Epson website here. Now, for a bit of information, I'm connecting this printer via uh, the Wi-Fi connection and what I found is there's a bit of an issue where it doesn't actually connect and I'll show you exactly what's happening. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the ET3850 for my printer and then what we're going to do here is we're going to come down to the software section so we can download the software for the printer. Now I've done this so I can show you exactly what was happening and it may confuse some people and I thought I would just make a quick video explaining the way around it uh, because it can be a bit frustrating if you're not used to these sorts of things so let's go over to the download section here and you'll see a bunch of download uh, files you can go for i'm going to go for the epson uh, product setup here and download this here but there is a product setup page here where you can click on so i'm going to hit this one and hit the download and this will download the software it will say please note to use this software, you do need an internet connection. So that is what we're going for here because we're connecting this uh, printer via Wi-Fi. If you're using uh, USB, I'm pretty sure it's just going to go ahead and install. But Wi-Fi can always be a little bit tricky to get working for some printers. So I've got this downloaded now and it's now opening. Just accept their terms and conditions here. And I'm going to accept. And you can see here, I'm going to say yes. It's going to check. And it's going to say additional agreements. I'm just going to uncheck these because I don't want to be involved in any of that sort of stuff. But again, we can see here, check the following. And it says, have you already filled your ink up? I've already done this part. Uh, so I'm going to skip that bit. And it says downloading the required software. Now, this is where you might think that it's going to be really super easy to download the software. And it's not. What happens is it ends up causing a bit of an issue. And I'll show you exactly what happens once this. Uh, installs the actual software. It's going to check the system uh, environment here and it's going to ask you to connect via Wi Fi or via USB cable or via uh, the wired LAN. So I'm going to go for wireless network here and we'll go to next. Now, once you do this, um, it should try to connect via the Wi Fi um, network. So let's go ahead and do this. And it's going to come up with checking the system. Now, I'll let you into a little secret. This is already uh, connected to the Wi Fi network, but it doesn't actually work. What happens is here, you can see here, connect using the WPS button, or connect using the temporary USB cable, or connect by the entering the network SSID. If you want to set this up, I would advise you to plug in the USB cable if you have one. They don't supply that with the printer nowadays and then set up your Wi-Fi, it will be a lot easier because if you do this, exactly what I'm showing you here, where you're going through and connecting to your Wi-Fi and following along here, which I've already done, you're going to run into an issue, which I'll show you right now where it says printer not found. So let me go ahead here and just skip to this next section and I'll show you on the actual printer itself. So assuming that you follow the long here, it'll go along and start setting up the network for you. It's going to scan the printer and the PC, and you can see here, printer not found. Click OK and follow the on-screen instructions. So this will give you a bunch of instructions. I'm going to click the back button here because I'm going to show you how to get it working without the USB cable. It's pretty straightforward, uh, but we're going to go back. And it's just going to check the environment again. And we're going to go down to this area where it says advanced configuration. And you'll see a IP address here. Now, if you've already set up the Wi-Fi on your printer like I have, then you can use the actual IP address to actually connect it. Because what's happening right now, it's saying it doesn't know where the printer is. It's not found, even though I've already set up the Wi-Fi network on the printer. So if you've set up your Wi-Fi network on the printer and you're running into this issue, trying to download the software and it's telling you 
that the printer is not found and I'll show you exactly what you need to do to uh, bypass this issue. So if we check the on-screen display on the printer itself, it's asking us to go up to this Wi-Fi network here and it will say recommended, which I've already done. And you can see it's connected. It's saying it's connected and we have a connection. But what you want to do here is grab this IP address for the actual wireless uh, connection. So grab the IP address and head back over to the software on the PC and put in the IP address. And this way it should connect and you should be able to use that printer and install the software. Watch what happens when I click next now. Straight away, check in the system environment again, and voila. We now are allowed to download all of the software, and it's really stupid from Epson to do this because a lot of people are going to go through the same process as what I did and end up not being able to download all of the software here. And most of the people that are using a printer are probably going to set up the Wi-Fi network straight away. And this is when you're going to end up with printer not found, even though you have the actual printer uh, connected to the Wi-Fi network and even being able to uh, actually print on it. But what you're trying to do is get it to talk to the actual PC so you can get the software on here so you can use the printing software. Now, if there's any sort of firmware updates, it's always best to update the firmware. So go ahead and update the firmware if you want to on your PC, or you can use the on-screen display to update the firmware on the actual printer. But it actually said the latest firmware is installed, whereas on the PC, it was saying there was a firmware available. So I don't know what's going on there, but it did actually start to work. Once I retried it, it downloaded and went through the firmware update process. So just let that go through and do its thing. And once that's done, you should be ready to use your printer and also use the software on your PC. Anyway, that has now all been completed and you should now see in your applications Epson and you could go in here and you should see a bunch of software and other stuff inside here, which helps you uh, manage your printer from your PC if you want to do that. You can actually do this from a phone or a tablet as well using the Epson uh, software. You can get that from the App Store, just download it and install it and you'll be able to print from your phone and you can just click on photos and print straight to the printer as well or scan uh, stuff as well from there. You can do a lot of stuff from the actual phone. I think that's the uh, sort of method they want you to do. But me being old school, I want to still use it from my PC in a way that it's designed to do as well. So I want all options available. Anyway, that is going to be about it for this video. That is how you can get around the printer not found if you're installing the Epson software. That's how you can do it by just putting the IP address in. Pretty straightforward and easy to do. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members. I appreciate the support and I'll catch you in the very next video. Bye for now.